Hello, everyone. My name is Ben Marchman, and I am the host of the Firekeepers Global Conference, in which we'll gather for powerful conversations with cutting edge experts and thought leaders who will guide you to connect to your truest self and activate your natural gifts. This event is designed to reinstate the importance of carrying our soul directed vision back into our communities so that ourselves and our communities will flourish. Here you're invited to learn how to seek the guidance of your inner voice so you can truly understand what it means to live life with purpose. Very excited today to be talking with Kendi Nebecker. Kendi has a very wide uh, range of uh, bio, and, but to sum it up, um, Kendi holds a master's degree in graphic design and in transpersonal psychology, but concentration in eco psychology. After 30 years of work in the design profession, in the last decade, she has trained as a wilderness rites of passage guide, completing workshops and apprentices at the School of Lost Borders, Animus Valley Institute, and the Ropas University Transpersonal Psychology Department, just to name a few awesome places. <laughs> she is currently just training to receive accreditations as an integral coach. Kenny is a creator and owner of New Moon's Rites of Passage and works with individuals and organizations in many areas of change and transformation, such as leadership, life transitions, grief, and general psycho-spiritual development and well-being. Kenny is committed to cultural renewal through the work of deepening and transform transforming our relationships to the natural world, to ourselves and each other as together we create the conditions for the shift in consciousness that we must all take in order to become a sustainable species on the planet. So Kenny, I'm really excited to talk to you today about mapping the territory, the landscape of collective transformation. So welcome, awesome. Thank you, Ben. Thank you very much. It's so interesting to hear you read all of that so I can kind of hear myself from the outside. Thank you very much for that. And, um, good, good, wonderful idea of what you are doing here. I just love this idea of fire, fire keepers. You're really doing an awesome, awesome job. Yeah, and um, I'm just excited that you're joining in on the call today. Is there um, a way that you want to welcome everybody in today to our circle, or did you want yeah. to start with questions? Yeah, um, I just want to uh, make a small correction that you were reading our old topic, and the new one is right. You just switched it. Why it's good to be why planetary collapse is a good time to be human, right? So, um, yeah. Oh, I just want to say it's so good to see you all. I see that there are a couple of people here that I know and uh, really warms my heart. Thank mm. you so much for your support. Um, I have, Ben, I was watching um, your thing this morning, the very first interview of yourself with yourself. How beautiful and your lighting of a candle. So I've lit a candle here. Um, and I, I think what I would like to do is just take 60 seconds. Oh, and there's another candle. There are more candles. To just take 60 seconds and everybody sit together in silence. First with attention on your own self, your, your bodily sensations and what's happening in your mind and your heart. And then after, you know, 20, 30 seconds, then turning your attention, keeping part of your attention still in yourself to extend out and feel everybody else that's here now on this call live and the people in the future who will be listening to this recording. Does that sound good? That sounds lovely. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's do it.
All right, thank you so much, everybody. Um, and I would encourage you if you can or you want to show your video. I'd love to see faces if it if it works for you. Sure, I have the option open that y'all can start your video. Um, and so feel free to do that. Um, and if you once again, if you can't find your video, go up to a meeting where it says Zoom meeting edit window, blah, blah, blah. It should be in the top left corner of your computer. And when you click meeting, you'll be able to, um, uh oh, um, that might be a problem too if we do do or open our videos because you might have um, people that don't have their sound on. A mint can need that it'll go to their video, such as like we're seeing the screen of Patty's right now. Um, so let's actually close our videos if that's possible. Um, that's the only thing that's kind of tricky with Zoom here. Because <laughs> um, since you're the main speaker here. Okay. Um, All right, I will just imagine everyone's face. Yeah, that's the only problem with Zoom. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but it looks like when people do that, um, their feed might come up and it's hard to see who's talking if you're watching this. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, sometimes when you have our profiles open, um, some people leave a picture, which is kind of nice, but most screens will be black with the name. All right. Okay. There's some logistical stuff there. That's fun. Fun technology. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, Kendi, should we, should we dive in? Is there yes. Let's, let's, should we just like, just dive in right now and talk about planetary collapse? Just let's just go for it. Uh, um, well, we can hold off for a little bit. <laughs> um, I, had, I had a first question, um, just okay. to, for you to expound a little bit on your um, bio. Mm. And, and this, um, I wonder if you want to tell a little bit of the story on how, how you came into this work. A little bit mm. of the story and that's good very good ah. yes um well i was uh very happily living my life as a designer doing public art and mm, doing well in that profession and then my early 40s i started feeling this like <laughs> uncomfortableness you know how that is and um i actually uh, went through a divorce and my whole life just kind of imploded and I was looking for what really mattered. And I stumbled across a master's degree offering from Naropa University, a master's in transpersonal psychology with a concentration in eco-psychology and the little blurb that it, that it, that was up there about what that degree was about just sung to me the way graphic design had sung to me as a freshman in college when I heard what it, what it was about. And so I went along that path um, and it started to, my life has started to sort of integrate more and more of all the disparate different, what used to be separate pieces of my life. As I have gone along this path, I can see that all those things that were separate now are starting to integrate into this one weaving um, thread, the center thread of which is really about transformational change and evolution, about how we as human beings are on the planet, um, how we perceive the world, how we move through the world, my design career was a very much about how we literally see, how we take in information um, and make sense of it. And so that, those same questions that I was fascinated by in, as a designer just started getting bigger and bigger and more cosmic and more uh, all-encompassing. And now I find myself, you know, what, 57 and a half years after being born in a very different world with um, lots of the challenges facing us. And I can say, whoa, I'm just exactly in the right place at the right time. And I'm 
very excited to um, be working in rites of passage, doing that work like you, Ben. And um, watching what is happening at the very edges of how we understand ourselves and our world. Well, that's what I would have to say. And, and what a and what a journey and what a amazing um, group of places that brought you to the to their paths to their doorsteps um, to the listeners and to the uh, viewers uh, that don't know where these places are, such as School of Lost Borders, um, Animus Valley Institute in Naropa. <laughs> uh, if you are get into uh, eco psychology and rites of passage work those are like literally the summits and the, the tops of the pyramid <laughs> and so um and it's very amazing places with amazing people who have brought this work to um, the western world in in different ways yes um, and we can talk gosh about all three of those for probably two hours if you wanted that's to that's right yeah um, standing on the shoulders of giants huh <laughs> yeah yes. and so yeah and i just want to say thank you for sharing a little uh, a little bit of your path and your life story. It's so wonderful always to hear that. And, and that um, kind of goes into my, um, kind of my second question. Um, you have a unique way of pulling wilderness rites of passage work into like the collective community as well as within your past trainings in transpersonal psychology and even design your websites great <laughs> um a lot of people don't think about the design piece <laughs> and so i just wanted to um ask that second question was like how how do you uh see those fitting into the bigger picture of of the collective and how we're building communities see which specifically uh, yeah, how do you, how do you see yourself how do you see yourself using like women's rites of passage work and transpersonal psychology in your other um, ways of building relationships to, um, I'll rephrase that question, to sustain our communities in your yes. work. Yes. It's, it's really, it's all really in service of community. Um, as you know, Ben, one of the um, central reasons and the central hmm, results, I suppose you could say, of rites of passage since anciently, since human beings have been on the planet um, as, as tribes, uh, hunter-gatherers, um, these animal organisms working together kind of without fur, fur or scales to take care of ourselves, um, we have uh, used rites of passage as a way of going from one stage to another stage in, in our lives. And um, classically, the rites of passage of going from puberty to adulthood is the rites of passage that we know most in this culture. And in indigenous um, societies, often that was the young people going out, young men usually going out, uh, going through a threshold time some kind of uh, challenge, uh, difficulty. Nowadays we do fasting and coming back with a knowing, with a vision, with some sort of new piece of information that is for the people. We do this rites of passage in order to sustain our people. And so, um, the, the rites of passage work that I do is always infused with this idea of social activism in whatever way that may manifest itself for the individual. It is not necessarily going out and holding a sign and protesting. There are many, many different ways that we can change, influence, nudge culture. And each one of us has a piece. Um, especially in these times when so much is changing and we're at sort of an unprecedented precipice. Beautiful. And 
well summarized. Uh, that, as, as mentioned earlier, that can go on a tangent as well. Yes. <laughs> uh, and there's so many definitions of rites of passage work, and, um, and some are actually not nature-based and some are. Um, and so the way you, you're bringing it to your community is in a very unique way through the transpersonal experience. Um, some people might have a different experience with their rites of passage in their questing. And um, one thing that actually wasn't in your bio that I did want to touch base on before we move to like the, the, the bigger questions here is if you want to explain to the viewers and the listeners um, that, are, that are listening to this call later or that are on now, um, to how you even pull in um, indigenous wisdom, such as a medicine walk. Um, mm. Some people might not know what that is or have a different definition. Um, so I wanted to hear your unique answer to that. Yes, well, I, first I wanna say that I come from a tradition, so what I know is, um, yeah, it's unique, but it's also what I'm, in terms of um, medicine walk and, uh, um, yeah, the, can you, so. Maybe we can just start in, uh, what, is, what is a medicine walk okay. for you? And how yes. do you, um, right. I wouldn't say facilitate it because this is an indigenous um, ceremony, but um, right. how do you conduct ceremony within your community? Right, your right. so you were talking about the indigenous wisdom, right? So the training that I have is from the School of Lost Borders and one of the things that they say and I see some, I felt at least one fellow school lost border person here, is that it is pan-cultural, what they teach and the way that uh, wilderness guides that are trained by the school hold the ceremony is in a pan-cultural way, meaning that there is no appropriation from one particular culture that, that uh, it, it's a bare bones of the ceremony that, that, that is sort of the universal underlying part from many different cultures, from many different um, traditions all over the world. What is it that works at the very barest um, structure? And so uh, a medicine walk is a, like a mini version sort of, of a rites of passage. So it has the basic kind of form, which is a three-part form that Joseph Campbell spoke about in his Hero with a Thousand Faces, um, was the idea of a, a, a separation, a threshold, and a return. So the hero, it's also known as the hero's journey, the hero, heroine goes out and separates from what he or she knows, from community, from comfort, and goes through a testing time, as I had spoken about earlier. Uh, and for this pan-cultural form, it is going without, with, with just with minimal shelter. It's being without community, so it's by yourself and without food but with water um, for three days. The medicine walk uh, is, not, is, is a one day version of this. And then the return is after the threshold, the hero or heroine returns to tell their story. And the telling of the story is an important part. So a medicine walk is a day and, and it can even be an hour um, of going out into the natural world, but being in the natural world in a particular way. So as you were talking about, Ben, in your interview at the beginning of this um, summit, you, there's a, an intention, right? You were talking about intention, how, that, how powerful that is. So on a medicine walk, we bring an intention, some question that we're holding, some information or, or guidance that we're seeking. And we, we go out into the world, the natural world, in a ceremonial, I've called it sacred theater frame of mind. And it acts
activates what a, a friend of mine calls indigenous mind. It activates this other way of being that to me really reminds me of childhood. And then you just are out on the walk for however long it is and you're you are being guided by your impulse about where to go what you notice so rather than being goal directed through the will and through the mind it's a way of traveling through the time and space that is mm, intuition based heart based you're drawing on other senses and things happen as you know right it's sort of weirdly miraculous and i've taken people out on medicine walks who have really no idea what it is and it's amazing how quickly we just drop down into that way of being that we we were for 90 percent primarily have been for 90 percent of our um time here on earth uh, that is just it just knows in a different way and then a medicine walk is a return part of that is the return and often if if you have I do medicine walks for myself and I listen to my own story or make my own interpretation but also you can have a guide or a community of people that you come back to and you tell the story and your time out it speaks in metaphor and poetry and as as you have articulated ben that's the language of the soul um and it nourishes and satisfies in ways that i have not found other things to 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 do you know mm. it feels a part of the of my humanness that is often missing in this modern civilized culture Awesome, beautiful, and and just for the viewers and the listeners, that that was a very well done description of medicine walk because it can be formulated in so many different ways. Yeah. Um, and it, and um, the the piece in the medicine walk of, of what you're saying, um, the return of the soul, which I love. Um, and sometimes it's like a, you know, it's not a reawakening, but it's also something like as a guide, like coming, you know, guide to guide. Since you and I are both vision yeah. class guides um it can also be you can kind of treat it as like it's not really homework but it can be like hey you know you have somebody come into one of our you know one of the ceremonies it's a vision quest ceremony i'm like go go on a medicine walk and find your intention before you show back up and it's it's not like a duty it's not something we just make people do like you know if I'll, if you were going back in time to the indigenous peoples of our continent um a medicine walk was always done with intention when something was coming up for somebody and it was self you know self-described ritual mm. um, the piece of the word in that word the word medicine and what that really means like you know you're walking to communicate with soul and deeply with nature and spirits or even omens god or whoever you pray to and you're coming back with your medicine and that yeah. medicine can be it can just be a piece it doesn't mean like you're coming back with your purpose like a full-on vision like oh i know exactly what's going to happen to humanity it's just like you just get a little peek yeah. and but it's done through a wander which is so fascinating and that's that surrendering and wandering and like the movement yeah and like that's what's so special because usually during a quest you're you're in one spot and so it can be a really cool introduction into like somebody who might be interested in a rites of passage ceremony or a vision quest that's not sure so you can and like you said, sometimes it's going to be done in an hour if it's if it's held correctly in that space. Like you yes. kind of mentioned um, yes. that council piece at the end when people are sitting in a circle, telling them telling about what happened. If you have the correct mirroring, um, which we can talk about if you want to, um, reflection back from the guides and the other people in the group, that can then, like you're saying, Joseph Campbell, that creates a myth within all of us. Yes. <laughs> Which that to me is a, is so cool. Um, and like Joseph Campbell, um, if you're reading his books, he talks about the mythopoetic poetry of how to reflect, you know, somebody's story back from what you're hearing, mm -hmm. and not in a judgmental way. So it creates this storyline for the whole group, and everybody's back in this person's experience. So that's gonna be really powerful and help yeah. someone build awareness behind their uh, kind of what they're getting at or what they're working on. So that's just huge. 
if that piece wasn't there, then people would be like, I just went and wandered for the woods for the longest time and now I don't have anybody to talk to <laughs> about this weird experience. And so yeah. it's, just, it's, it's, it's profound but at the same time, so transformational. So I'm, I'm glad we had to touch base on um, how you pull this into your work because it's something that you might see with a lot of um, rites of passage type ceremonial um, organizations, nonprofits, businesses, or whatever they label themselves as. And, and sometimes it's like overlooked by somebody looking at it like really what it is. So I'm glad we got to touch base on that. Yeah, and you articulated that very well, Ben. I like that you, that you um, pointed out that it, it's done sometimes in, pres well, in preparation for a full on major vision fast. It's, and it's information gathering, right? And, and that it's incremental and bits and pieces like breadcrumbs. It's a way of following breadcrumbs. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it has been used a lot in intros. And actually, if you look at all of our, another, there's another talk about this uh, later this week that our, all the listeners and our viewers will see uh, mm. that you know, every religious figure has gone on some sort of vision quest, rites of yes. passage journey. Yes. But it started with a walk. They had, and that started with that intention. And so if you think about it, you know, they're, you know they're, everybody's kind of starting with this, some sort of form of their own medicine walk to get there. Yes, yes, yes. And I'm, you know, I always fantasize or imagine about, can you imagine a culture where CEOs, um, educators, uh, politicians, businessmen, in making their decisions about what they're going to do next, they incorporate medicine walks, nature-based medicine walks as a way of helping them, giving, getting information about what to do next. I mean, that, that would be amazing, huh? It would change the world. I can it would think change some, the world. I can think of some presidents that could need that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I want to, I'm going to change a little bit of the subject here. Um, right. today, I can see this kind of going into like the, yeah, you know, like why would I want to be going on a medicine walk or on one of these transpersonal journeys? Um, and like that word intention, um, but kind of going a little bit back, uh, we talked a little bit in your bio, just touch base on it on like integral theory. And I wanted to know if you want to expound a little bit on, what is integral theory and how is your work informed a lot from this training? Okay. Well, that's, this is going to be a challenge. My friend Williams, who on, is on this call, it would be the one to really answer that. But um, it's something that I came across during my graduate work uh, at Naropa and was part of the master's degree. And it's basically a, framework, integral theory, a framework that developed by a man named Ken Wilbur, who's currently in Boulder, Colorado, where he took, I, I remember in his book, A Brief History of Everything, where he outlines it, he talks about in his 30s, how he was doing um, some kind of a paper for a class, and he started just putting these cards out on the floor, index cards, you know, about indigenous wisdom traditions, about philosophy, Eastern and Western philosophy, and sort of every system that he could think of and that he came across um, around human wisdom, how we know things. And being the incredible genius that he is, he eventually came up with a multidimensional framework in which you can place any thing or any thought or any discipline or anything in our human experience and kind of begin to see how it all fits together. It's very difficult to explain what integral theory is because it's pretty complex, but um, it has really helped me see things in terms of levels of development of consciousness that people and people are, we go through different levels of consciousness and that not only individually, but also collectively, we're moving through different individual levels and these levels have particular 
characteristics. They have particular world views. Um, and that the trajectory of levels of development eventually kind of just go through towards what is popularly called enlightenment. Um, but I'm, I'm sure that the, you know, the Christian tradition has its own word for it, Western Judeo tradition, you know, becoming a saint, uh, which is the total relaxation of the ego structures and this capacity to see a very, very big world view. And one other important part of integral theory that really applies to um, the work that I do is the idea that the levels of development that we as humans have gone through thus far are at what is called first tier. They're sort of like the first foundational parts of a layered cake. And each of those levels of development that have their own worldview don't like the worldview of all the other levels of development, which is the basis for a lot of the culture wars that are happening right now around the world. People with traditional worldviews hate the people with scientific rational worldviews who dislike the people with the green eco, everyone is equal groovy views, and they disdain each other. So this is tier one, but what is happening now that there is a level of consciousness coming online, Wilbur identified these things, he didn't generate them. He's just noticing what is actually happening and seeing the patterns. So there's another level of development coming online, which is being labeled as second tier. And the distinguishing characteristic of that tier is that it, it has the capacity to see all other levels that it has already been through and see how each one is important and see how each one has contributed and is able to hold and accept all of them. So if you can imagine a critical number of, well, a critical percentage of the human population, seven billion of us, some say that that critical percentage is what, 10%, I think, right, William? Uh, once you get about that, percentage of people on, up, at, up or down, you know, it's not hierarchical, it's not better or worse, right? Let's be very clear about that. But people at this coming into the second tier, the fighting and the warring just drops away. And it's really interesting to me that this is, it's like a second coming. You know, it's, it's, a, it's potentially a fundamentally different way of operating as human beings. And what it could and portends to usher in is, a, is a, an era of working together and creatively building a, a different world um, in, in a way that we have, we have never in history seen before. And I think rites of passage and the transformational work that you are doing and probably all of the people on this call or doing or interested in is a really fundamental part of that. Wow, and what a great description and keeping it short, because uh, <laughs> well done. <laughs> uh, I was like, this is a heavy question, um, and pulling us back into the science for a second. <laughs> Um, yeah, thank you for expounding on that. I'm sure um, a couple people, when I mentioned that in the um, bio, just casually mentioned that, um, they were wondering. Um, so, and speaking about uh, this time that we're in, um, that you have hinted to multiple times, um, and also your subject, um, which we can uh, get get to, is um, like, what, what really gets kindy? Um, <laughs> Kenny excited about this transformational time that we're in. Yes. Well, I feel like I first want to speak about the despair just a little bit. Yeah. Sure. 
it feels really important to name that and to acknowledge that the grief and the despair and I have to say, living in Salt Lake City, Utah, I don't, it's not, you know, the weather's, are, the weather's a bit warmer, but the skiing is great up in the mountains. It's been great the last few years. I don't know, we're getting more moist. You know, I, don't, I, I mean, I haven't checked like the weather, if there's really evidence in Salt Lake City of climate change. So I'm living, a little bit from a place of what I hear on the news and what people are predicting. But if I open myself up to that and I really let it in, which is psycho psychically really difficult to do, it's painful. Um, if I really let it in, it's really impossible to hold, really. I have to have some kind of mental barrier to hold it at bay because what it what it points to or intimates it it's sort of beyond conception yeah what would you say ben i want to i just want to hear some other voices behind besides my own about this um yeah we can open up a dialogue a little bit um since this summit's a little different it's not really interview format um yeah in despair like exactly like what you're saying we're all feeling this in our on our planet and it's spreading and but you did touch base on something that's so important like how we're all part of this collective consciousness and um and with it we're you know if somebody's feeling despair that's going to spread it's just kind of like and, you know, it's like a disease um, and it's a virus. Um, mm -hmm. And that's why in our time, like this transformation that we've already kind of, we've actually already been in. A lot of everybody thinks like our times are changing and this is the decade. Like this has happened way before any of us are actually this generation and past generation for you and I are both even born. Um, and I, so, so like yeah, I mean, in some ways things are always transforming right yeah and we always think like oh this is the decade um but to get to this decade you know if you think about like human history like we've just been like a twinkle in the eye so like we're slowly moving to this so um to me i think despair is, has always been there and mm. it's always going to be a challenge um and since this summit's really based in the soul centric work um you know soul to me and like and then hearing it from mentors and indigenous elders as well i always like to think like soul doesn't see despair soul only sees hope mm. that's a, a, a good way to look at it because it's you know whenever you're communicating with soul if you're communicating through despair it's not going to listen to you that's that's your ego <laughs> and that's the way I, I look at it um i could be somebody could probably be shaking their head and seeing that the wrong way um but just hearing from the indigenous wisdom from many of the speakers that are on this, that are on this summit who are talking about the same thing as well mm -hmm. as, you know, what's out there going on and from personal experiences, that's just where I could speak yes. from. That's, uh, that's the way that's, I see it. That's beautiful. I mean, that's a, a really great articulation of it. And it, it really speaks to, if I bring it back to integral theory, the place where we can, our identity, how we perceive of ourselves, how we perceive ourselves is I am this spirit in a human body, which indigenous people have always come from that place. But I'm also overlaying all of the scientific knowledge that I have, all my capacity for technology. It's including all of that together, but where I, where the seed of my identity is, is soul, I am something larger than this person, larger than this structure that's alive for, you know, if I'm lucky, 80 something years, and then I disappear. No, I, I'm something larger than that. And, and this intuitive knowing that I have, and that is activated when I go on a medicine walk, when I can I feel, that I am connected to everything else. Yes, this place knows something that 
can hold the despair. It can mm. hold that part of me that feels like it's all unraveling. That part is bigger. Yes. Yeah, beautiful. And since you're, you've, you've had trained in Amos Valley, I was watching um, a talk when we were in a training way a long time ago, I guess that was over a decade ago, with Bill Plotkin. And yeah. he, he's kind of like a interesting guy as you know him because you've been trained you've trained there um i always just remember he's like you can dish anything um he's, uh, i'm probably gonna butcher this i'll make sure i got it right yeah you can you can dish anything to the earth it's like a sponge it's going to absorb all of your despair all of your darkness but you get but when you do that when you dish that to soul it's just going to reflect back your ego. <laughs> and I just love that. Like trying to get rid of that ego and just throw that out onto the land because it's going to soak it in. But when you communicate with soul, it's just deeper listening. And so it's just be, it doesn't really need any of your dialogue. It just needs you to be still and in that state of being. That's great. Um, but I love that terminology. Um, and so it, it I don't see Bill on the call, but the Bill, if you are watching this, and thank you for there are that. people that know uh, Bill that are on the call. <laughs> no, I just love I don't, that stuck home with me whenever we had that conversation. I love that. Yeah, yeah very um, good. We we are we're not at the top of the call yet, but I have one more question, and then we can um, summarize kind of our talk. Um, and so we touched. I touched base on a lot of the questions I think I had for you. Um, okay. And I do, I do want to speak more explicitly to why, you know, I don't feel like I've really. Sure. And so if there's anything I've, I'm leaving out, feel free to expound okay. on. We still okay. have some time. All right. Oh, now? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, you could uh, feel free to. Uh, okay. I thought you had one more that. question. That All right. True. That was okay. kind of the last question. It's like, All hey, right. so now we can summarize here. Okay. Um, I. I would like to say a few things and then I really, really would love to have all of you that are here on the chat type in something as well about why now is a good time to be on the planet. Mm -hmm. So first, um, I think that one has to be able to be in this transpersonal identity place to even answer that question. Yeah. And um some things might include i get to be here to see the evolutionary edge of where human beings are going to be here and to participate at a time where we're making the leap from who we have been for tens of thousands of years into who we are potential um, as a species. If, if you're listening to this, you're probably in a more privileged position and have the opportunity, time and space to think about what is my purpose? What am I here to offer? And the capacity to be more fully human with everything that's available to us through technology, through information, uh, and having the freedom and the opportunity to say, what is my unique soul's gift for being here? And how can it be part of changing culture and shifting what's where we're going? Um, I summarized your answer and put it in the chat. Okay. For everybody. Right. There um, you do. I okay. could have, we could have gone on on your answer, but yeah, like Kenny was saying, I'll rephrase the question for everybody and I'll write it again in the chat. But why is now a good time to be on this planet? Which is just a such a powerful question. Um, and think about what Kenny just said. Um, this, what shifts are you going through? And um, where do you moving towards and, and kind of think about your kind of like how we're hearing from Kenny, think about your journey and who's out there supporting you in this purpose. And then kind of ask, re-ask that question to yourself and see what comes up. 
Um, you can type that in the chat if you'd like. For some reason, it double times on, on myself there. But the question is, why is now a good time to be on this planet? And, um, and as you're kind of thinking about that, um, Kenny, if you, you're so welcome to expound on that. We still have about 10 minutes and then we can okay. close out with um, your free gift and your questions. So you still have a little bit of time. Okay, okay, yeah. So we just feel for myself. I would say what I said before, um, I, but maybe more slowly. And maybe it could be in the form of, um, just for our listeners or our viewers, um, I can reframe that question. Um, like maybe if there's any advice or if there's any uh, deeper wisdom you want to share um, from your experience or it can be guidance. Yes. Um, if that's yeah, right. like it, it's sort of like why is now a unique time to be here? Hmm. Uh, you know, for... In, in our human history, things would not change from generation to generation to generation to generation, right? You'd live in the same place. You'd marry your great, 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 great grandfather's other line of the family, you know? <laughs> You'd take on your father's or your mother's way of life, and then things have just changed hugely. So, of course, with all of the amazing things, there's, it's always a yin and yang. There's always the difficulty of trying to manage, how do I adapt to so much fast change? Um, there's one thing, I'm in a, a, a group of a few people, integral practitioners we call ourselves. And one thing that was brought up in that group was we get to be with each other in a completely different way. Here we are on this call right now. I recognize a few names and faces here and the people that will be listening into the recording, right? There is a way for us to connect and actually feel into each other and sense each other in ways that we never ever could before over distance and time. And what kind of creativity does that afford us? How are we building community in a way that has never been seen before? All these things, you know, of course, humans, we're always doing that, right? But mm -hmm. now with, with the pressure of climate change coming at us, we have to do it from a much bigger place. Like it's, like it's serious. It's, it's, pushing is putting pressure on us to get to that second tier of consciousness so that we can problem solve together and deal with perhaps our very existence as a species on this planet beautiful beautiful Thank you. yeah we got something from martha potter i don't know where you're coming in from martha if you have a location um oh martha from from idaho Cordial, yeah. 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 And um, she says, I'm here to pay attention, seek truth in all things, to help to raise awareness and facilitate unity. Wow. And having said that, she says, I invite you all to please become aware of and informed about the climate engineering operations that have been going on for decades. That's a great awareness. And um, she also goes on to say, no dialogue on climate change is complete, nor can it be accurate with out acknowledging climate engineering operations and so she listed the documentary that's must that inspires her so thank you martha for putting that in there oh and we got some more coming here we go um and hayden she says we have the y'all it seems like kendy and ann know each other that's exciting um and says we have the privilege to take advantage of a huge amount of wisdom traditions and to filter them through my own soul essence well said and then she goes on to say, then offer action and being through the unique lens of my soul and do this within community. Wow, we can all take that from Anne. And yeah, she, Anne is yeah. um, writes a passage guide as well. Oh, hey, Eva. I know, I know Eva. She's actually lives right down the road from me. Um, <laughs> if it's the same Eva Norton, I didn't see your location put in, Eva. Um, 
But Eva says, to see so many people becoming united in a collective way, mm. you know, worldwide movements starting to understand what the ancestors already knew. Yes. Well said. Yes. It's always cool to see your neighbors on there. Yeah. There's a lot about, about the collective, isn't, isn't there? A sense of being, mm, you know, instead of just a tribal group of 30 people that, that moves around the land mm -hmm. collecting and harvesting, and there's a sense of, of how I can be part of a community that is even, even larger. Um, and to be deeply, how to be deeply connected to other people. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good space to be in. Um, well, we're getting close to the top of the hour, and, um, and that's a deep subject to be in. I wish you and I had another hour to talk about just what we're talking about now. Um, but oh, we got one more. Valerie Gibbons, to heal ourselves, others, and the world through our passions. Short but sweet. I like that, Valerie. Mm -hmm. um, and so to, before we close out and, and you leaving us with something, and as well as get, for anybody that has questions for you, I uh, did want you to talk about a little bit about your free gift on which you're leaving mm -hmm. everybody. And before we go into that, the free gifts are found next to each speaker's uh, picture and right next to their bio and underneath their topic, you'll see the free gift uh, link. Um, right. Mine is to be announced, but here's the announcement. <laughs> which is fine. It'll be, that'll be changed tonight. So you'll see it on Kendi's okay. recording. Yeah. So um, what I would like to offer is to help us to help you set up a medicine walk and to mirror it afterwards. And I have done this long distance and it works. So that would probably be a 30 minute phone call or Zoom call before to talk about your intention and to let me hear where you are going on a medicine walk, um, to answer any questions you have, and then for you to tell me when and where you're going so that I can be with you in my awareness. And then after the medicine walk, um, a, a 30 minutes for me to mirror your story. Wow. It's a lot, huh? That's amazing. And yeah. what a, what a, like a real and visceral offering. That's yeah. really, it's really beautiful. <laughs> um, and I would, I mean, I, I might take advantage of that after our call. I mean, it's just like that amazing. So I hope that, right. <laughs> you, have people you know, know, yeah, if it, it might mean I have to stretch out for months. We'll see how many people respond. Yeah. But, um, and, and just let everybody know, you know, these medicine walks can, they can even be like, like you're saying, short and sometimes even weekly basis. I've never even met somebody who does a medicine walk every day. Mm. Um, and you, mm. or you can do some, I've, I've had some clients or even myself sometimes change the name to a medicine sit. So it's just yeah. a little mini <laughs> movement. So you can kind of, as long as you're carrying that sacred space, but not also um, regarding this indigenous wisdom that you are actually performing. That's the important piece. And so like the ceremonial ritual work can be very effective, but remember, and something we didn't really touch base on, I kind of want to take away your ending here is, um, you know, this indigenous wisdom that we're talking about, um, a lot of people always think that's for you. And I always like to kind of guide people into understanding that, um, and I'm sure you can relate to this too, Kendi, that your medicine is not for you. It's for your community. Right. And that's something to really think about before you really conduct ceremony. Cause like, what's your intention and what are you doing? And like, or why? Right. And, and how is this help? Not really how is this helping you, but how is this helping others? And how is right. this helping well, it's a both, it's a both end, right? It helps me and through it helping me, I am of service. It yeah. is ultimately me in service. And I'm so, so glad you're offering the medicine walk. That is yeah. probably one of the most unique gifts out of all the speakers. So it's oh, great. Really, really great. <laughs> um, and so we still have about like five minutes and I wanted to open up the Q and A. Um, we have one more post from William before we do the yes, Q and A. Which is, 
This is a time that calls for for unique gifts to respond to the sheer scope and birth, I mean breath, sorry, of the crisis humanity is facing. This is a del, 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 oh, can't even pronounce myself. <laughs> developmental process that grows us in ways we could not imagine or anticipate touching our hearts, minds, bodies, and soul, all in the service of love. Mm. Wow, hard. Bring it home for Kennedy today. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna open up. You can either come, you can post your question in the chat, which is usually easier because usually when I open up video, um, it can get a little chaotic. Um, if you know how to raise your hand, sometimes you can do it that way, and I can bring your video to the front of the people. Mm. Usually the chat's the best way to do this. Um, so I just invite you to, if you have any questions about something we touched base on that we didn't talk about, or is any questions for Kendi and her subject, feel free to throw those in there um, on, the t on the time that we have here. And as people are kind of thinking about what they want to talk about, um, yeah, I just want to say Kendi and people posting in the chat so far, thank you for adding to this conversation and allowing us to go in this dialogue that's really needed for not just us two, but for you all. So thank you. Um, not seeing anything come through yet. Um, and then you want to add in um, anything else that we feel like we didn't touch base on? Uh, that would be another four hours. Yeah, I feel like it would. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel like we just barely got into, you know, why it's a good yeah. time. I, I feel it's, I feel like it's really important that if we have the capacity to be in the kind of resonance and coherence that is, yes, it is a good time to be on the planet. And yes, I am putting my weight on that future where we all really learn how to talk to each other and hear each other and be with each other across all spectrums of society and culture around the world. I want to be that change. Mm. Then there's soul by soul by soul. We're creating the structures of the new butterfly. As we know so well about the rites of passage work, there's always a death and a destruction. And then that is a new birth. The same thing, the yin and yang again. So, you know, I meet a lot of people that are in despair and that are bummed out and that are, or numbed out, bummed out or numbed out. Um, but as as many people who can really stand in the place of, yes, this is difficult, and yes, it is hard, and it's very hard for some people, and we're going somewhere. There is a purpose, there is a meaning, and I'm coming forward to be in community to stand for this new world that is being born. Wow. That, I don't think I can top that, or not trying to top that, but, um... I don't think I can expound on that for you. I think that was really well said and a good way to close us out, unless you want to end this with anything that's really short. Um, I think that's- just Thank you all. I just wish that we could all be videoing and I would love to just actually hear your voices and maybe in the future, the technology bandwidth will make that totally not a problem. Yeah. <laughs> and um, you can, I'll put your, um, I can put your website page. Oh, we got a, another post in here before we um, end out here. Martha yes. Potter, I think this is a good way to begin by connecting with each other in ways that matter. I would love to hear more of what Kendi would like to share at another time, a longer time. Yes, oh, exactly, thank Martha. You, Martha. Um, we, seems like time is always precious. Um, and then Patty Meeks, this is an opportunity for deep listening, especially with those who are not of the same worldview. Mm -hmm. This deep listening must happen within me first and move outward. Yeah. Thank you, Patty. Patty, that makes my body go brrr. I get chills. Mm. Yes. Yes. I love Valerie's post that she's always been posting. Great one-liners, Valerie. Um, we made it through the 60s. We'll make it through this. Just another love revolution. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The pendulum swings, but the clock is moving forward. And notice we kind of moved the spare into the love revolution and the hope. Yeah. So I think that's yeah. a good way to close us out. Yes, so. yes, yes. Great. 
But I just want to thank you so much, Kendi. Yeah, thank you. Man. Thank you. You're you're awesome. You know, truly awesome. Thank you, and um, and touching all of our hearts and helping us really just look more inward and and to really just build community and to look at despair and all these darkness times that we're in, but in a different way. Yes, uh, we all desperately need. <laughs> yes. Um, so. Just thank you very much, and I'll be probably seeing you soon since you and I talk a lot lately. Yes. So, um, yes. <laughs> but have a have a great day and take care. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye.